My name is Hal Roth. I'm a professor of religious studies and contemplative studies at Brown University and the director of the contemplative studies program we've established here. I'm also on the executive of a new society, the International Society for Contemplative Research. And I'd like to issue all of you an invitation to join us. Over the past few decades, as the awareness of the transformative potential of contemplative practices has grown in our cultures, many people have been working away in separate and siloed academic fields on scholarship and research into these practices and their results. Far too often, we have had to carry out this research and scholarship in relative isolation from one another, and often at the fringes of what each of our separate fields considered respectable. We have had to deal with criticisms of our research and teaching by colleagues with relatively narrow views of what constitutes viable research and scholarship in our fields. The past 30 years of research findings have documented the beneficial effects of contemplative practices on cognitive, social, emotional, physiological, clinical, and educational domains of human experience. This work stems from the efforts of three largely distinct groups, scientists within the clinical sciences and cognitive neuroscience, scholars and researchers in the various humanities, social sciences, and education, and contemplative practitioners working in all these groups. All have been intrigued by the possibility of uncovering the core mechanisms of action and meaning by which contemplative training may impact the realization of our full potential as human beings, and by the integrative potential of contemplative training to inform the development of more inclusive models of mind, brain, and body interactions in the context of health, disease, performance, and human flourishing. Yet despite this productivity, the development of contemplative research has been impeded by fundamental conceptual and methodological challenges that jeopardize its longevity. Many of these are caused by the existing intellectual silos in the academy that divide the empirical sciences from one another and from the humanities, social sciences, and education. Because of this, the potential for a cumulative humanistic science that cultivates and integrates these previously siloed academic approaches has not yet been fully realized. And the need for standards and benchmarks for multidisciplinary approaches to engage in contemplative research remains. We establish the International Society for Contemplative Research in the hope that such an association of like-minded contemplative scholars will be critical in building research communities of mutual support that will enable all stakeholders to work together to overcome these difficulties and to formulate the foundations and methods for this important new academic field. We propose that over the longer term, the International Society for Contemplative Research will support disciplinary, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary field building and field sustaining initiatives needed for our scholarly community to form, to develop, and to thrive. I firmly believe that those who are afraid to test existing paradigms never make truly significant advances in human knowledge. And we now face so many challenges in this Anthropocene era that we can no longer wait to put our professional resources together to see what we can collectively do to have a positive impact on the devolutionary direction in which our world is heading. Our students, our children, our grandchildren are growing up in a world dominated, not just by the threat of environmental demise, but filled with the trendy postmodern nihilism that Paul Ricoeur once called the hermeneutics of suspicion. They live in a world in which hype and reality have become hopelessly confused. They live in a world in which delving into the deepest levels of human potential cannot easily compete with the siren call of social networking. 
They live in a world in which it becomes increasingly easier to revert into tribal divisions rather than discover what it is that connects us all in the human community. By working together both within and across academic silos, contemplative scientists, humanists, social scientists, and educators can communicate some of the idealism and compassion that has led each of us into our respective fields to a troubled world in desperate need of precisely this kind of more positive vision of our collective identities and our interdependent futures. We hereby extend an invitation to all like-minded scholars, researchers, and contemplatives to join us in this important field building effort. It is our fervent hope that by combining our resources, our vision, and our enthusiasm for this innovative silo busting endeavor, we will ultimately have a greater effect on helping to create human societies that are more healthy, more just, more humane, and more equitable. Thank you.